Hello, 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 and well, this is the uh, live stream of the finals for Code S. Yes, ladies and Germans, it is that final, final time here for Season 2. It has been a long road, but it's been a good one, I'd like to thank Rang. How about mm -hmm. you? Yeah, it's been a lot of good matches for another lo lovely season of Code S, but it's all finally coming to the end for this best of five finals. Indeed it is, but you know what? Uh, we're going to have a best of five finals. What are we going on in the first one? We, it, this is Odon, is it not? Mm -hmm. Yes, it, it is. is. I'm going to open up the game. Did you already press uh, play on the replay? Yeah. Okay, one well, I minute. Mean, I, I forgot to do that where he's changed the stream. Uh, just go to 445 for me, please. 445, okay. okay. But uh, yeah, we are on Odon for the first out of a potential five games of this, uh, well, pretty simple best of five tournament. And yeah, I'm kind I'm of excited about this, to be fair. Yep. Okay, you ready to go now? Sorry. Like, yeah, that's proper not go. a problem. Ready to go. So, three, two, one, and play. So, this is Odon, of course, and Rang, and I see we have ourselves a little bit of an itsy-bitsy, hairy spider. Mm-hmm. Ooh, and in fact, we're actually going to be seeing a Blinde over here, isn't it? Indeed, we are. So, our two finalists for today is Harry Spider on the left-hand side, playing as rather Blinde, and Water will be playing as the Paris Division on the right. So I'm just gonna go over the price pool real mm -hmm. fast. Mm -hmm. uh, the 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 winner of these of the entire bloody tournament will be getting a paradox game of their choosing, as well as two paradox DLCs. Or instead of having two DLCs, they could just get another paradox game. And second place will also go home with a paradox game as well as a DLC from paradox of their choosing. Sounds exciting. I mean, I know there's some great stuff coming out in the near future, but um. Let's have a you know a moment of silence or a moment of thanks over here for our sponsor, of course. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, with Steel Division Two coming out at some point in the next year, hopefully we'll get another one of these going on up. I don't know when. I don't know how. Have you heard any rumblings just yet, or no? Ah, uh, no, not yet. It's been pretty quiet on the Eastern Front. Ah, uh -huh, I see what you <laughs> did there. Um, we're gonna get started right now. Of course, I would say it's hard to well. It's hard to say the French don't have a little bit of an advantage here in the early part of this game, although, of course, the Festum Gross Paris division has just enough of everything they might be able to retard them down. What do you think? How are we going to start this out? I think Paris will have a pretty decent time in that town as they got all the bloody infantry that they can mm -hmm. just throw in while the French are going to be running out of infantry. Mm -hmm. you know, at the start, Harry Spider, he does have those flamethrower troops, and they're pretty scary, and I think we've seen... But the Harry Spider a full farmed when he managed to do like some crazy maneuvers in this town. I think that was him. I yes, think, was it the yeah. the the artillery strikes and then he rushed basically. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's he knows how to play this town. As you see, he's going to be going along the southern flank a bit, getting some flamethrower troops, popping in some smoke defensively. As that Puma yeah, is probably a little bit scary. Yeah, I think it's probably a good idea. I think. Maybe what I'm trying to get at a little bit more is the fact that all those extra half-tracks, I think, do give them an unfortunate base fire advantage over top of what the Gross Paris is going to be able to manage on their side. Yep. Uh, Especially when it's three stars for a 50 cal. Exactly. Exactly. And um, some of those flame troops, actually, we almost saw some Lenders shoots and really kicking on off, but nope. Flame troops just drop some smoke and back away. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if, they're, if they enjoy huffing and puffing or what they want, but something's going on there. Yeah, he didn't manage to get into the town of flame troops, which is probably his intent. But mm -hmm. um, he's going to be holding the forest part at least, not losing anything down south. And this is pretty good for Autry. He's got a nice space defensive position so far. He's holding north. He's just pretty much holding. And really, it can be a bit hard to push through Paris early on. It's not really till later on, where he, especially sea phase, where you got all the bloody tanks and panda grenadiers. Is where you can make a nice, make a nice push. That is certainly true. We are seeing just this constant smoke being used. I always, mm -hmm. I'm always impressed by first of all how long the smoke actually holds, and then yeah. secondly, how much smoke some of these flame troops have. Mhm. Mm There's all two man guys. They got like four bloody smoke grenades, which I think is the most you can hold. I think they carry the most smoke grenades out of any infantry unit, or maybe some others, but. They're doing pretty bloody good. Yes. These men's just skirmish around in this forest, and if he can get a bit closer, he can just uh, burn baby burn. Yeah, you know, I'm actually, I'm very, very surprised. I'm actually also seeing CDP Voltigiers 
Um, we don't usually see those guys coming out. I think, I, for me at least, anyway, I don't really see them coming out a whole lot. Actually, in fact, I don't really think we see a lot of people bringing in officer infantry in phase. Hey, am I wrong on that? I don't for, think it's happened French. too much. Yeah, I mean, I, I realize the Voltigiers are, are an integral part of that kind of leadership idea. Uh, sometimes you do. I mean, there's also some players who don't like taking the command infantry for French mm -hmm. because you just rather have more firepower infantry, especially with how low of the infantry numbers you have for the French armor division. Mm -hmm. But I really like his person, Harry Spy, just trying to do down south, as he's pretty much got a pretty clear shot, but he's starting to try and break through that Puma. And that's going to be a bit of a tough fight, even though the Greyhound and Puma, and they both have two star veterancy, but the Puma really has that slight advantage, I think. True. True. Now, one thing that is going to help him get through there, though, are those two stewards moving on in? Oh, yeah. Very good in this map. Because they've got all the bloody machine guns, nice and cheap. Really good for close-range fighting. Yes, and unfortunately for the Germans over here, the Pantashrek team, the marauding team that was going to be perfectly placed, mm -hmm. uh, well, gets aggressed on, and is uh, he's not going to enjoy that very much. Nope. No, they're not at all. I oh, have to yeah, say... Harry Spy Please, by all means. Yeah, Harry Spider is just amassing this little tank force here. And this is a really good area for tanks down south. It's much more open compared to pushing up north mm -hmm. in the town. But still having some cover, where, you know, using those French light tanks is going to help out quite a bit. Indeed. Now, I do like seeing this this B2 coming over here from the Germans. This is definitely going mm -hmm. to slow the entire thing down, I would say, to almost a crawl. Yeah. I mean, the bloody Greyhounds and Shirts are going to have a hard time penetrating and rather thick boy. So, and also, a B2, even though it, it can kill those tanks, but it's definitely going to stress them out with its big-ass howitzer. Even yep. the Marine for Israel taking some heavy hits. Well, yep, and that's thick with two C's, by the way, not a K, right? <laughs> yep. Uh, I, just, I was going to say, I really do love Walther's position in the north. Uh, while, of course, neither player's really going to aggress too much with that open field, with that long arterial, yeah. I really do love the kind of defense and depth that he has going on, and I kind of regret he wasn't able to establish that over here to the south. Mm -hmm. I do like how he has the pack 40 back a bit more, especially yes. against French, because if they're going to push you, they're going to push you hard, so... You want to kind of have that backup defensive, you know, final defensive line, a.k.a. the 75 mil Pack 40, who saw plenty of those tanks from completely breaking through. Indeed, and uh, it's up north, yeah, Panhard MG, okay, do a faulty gas, and Mazooks, okay, yeah, so not a whole lot's going to be happening there for quite a bit of time. I think you called it right, I think the southern side is where the entire, you know, Schwerpunkt, if you will, will be happening. Mm-hmm. Now, one thing I'm hoping for, and I don't know if this is going to happen in our maps today, I don't know if you have any visibility on that, I'd love to see a nice open map where we get some, ourselves some great kind of vehicle play. I would yeah. love to see a carpet cat with a couple of armor divisions on both sides. I know it's a vain hope, but I'd love to see that happen. You just want to see a big ass tank battle. Yeah! Pretty much, a, pretty much a Kursk. I'd like to see that too. Actually... Panthers and Fireflies going at it. The funny thing is, and, and I, I have to thank Tick for this, for opening my eyes to this, uh, we say Kursk has been this massive tank battle. Mm -hmm. Dube no. Look Dube up Dubno. Yeah, and oh my gosh. I'm sorry? All the BTs and yes. T26s. Yes. Um, without the kind of majesty of the charging T-34s against Tigers, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, in any case, we are going to see that uh, that triple threat through that half track of this M8 <laughs> and the Stuart. And that's going to be a meat grinder. German infantry is not going to be anywhere close to that. Yeah, but the problem with the Paris infantry early on is they don't have much long range. I mean, against tanks, they don't have anything bloody long range, of course. But especially against infantry, it's all just rifles, really, that you're using. It's not till... I mean, B-Phase got some good uh, CQC guys, but it's not until C-Phase where you get classic Panther Grenadiers who can really tear stuff up in open ground. And this is a really good push from Harry Spider. He's pushing a bit up north, too, for his like, northern middle arterial. Mm -hmm. some Boulder Gears and Half-Tracks. He's got Airplanes flying around. He's doing really bloody well, and he's managed to keep his stuff alive, and that's definitely a very important thing for the French. Yes. You want to try to keep your stuff alive, trade efficiently, so once the game does reach later stages, you still have something to hold on to. Gotcha. You know, you keep making, like, rock songs appear in my head right there. I was thinking strategy. <laughs> First, hold on loosely and don't let go. And if you yep. cling too tightly as the French, you will lose control. Um... <laughs> And really, their job is to be staying alive, you know? Yep, staying alive. Exactly. They are ladies' men. Just ask any uh, French woman, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, the Flak 30 not to the north, though. Uh, yeah, you might be bringing in those flame troops a little bit too close. Yeah, yeah. 
The small mercies, at least those are pioneers, they're not the two-man flame squads, so a little bit more durable. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and the Jinyu idiot, I didn't even see the Jinyu idiot come on in. Okay. Oh. So they've devastated their own infantry, but they have at least destroyed completely any attacking French infantry. So that that that's a, yep. a decent, I would say, call. Yeah, that's a good call. And he's still flying around. He may want to probably have an EU bag bug or Winchester bug. But fortunately, it's not a lot of AA3, so he's just going to fly around really nearly. No, and you know what? I think I'd rather have the tanks be shooting at the aircraft as opposed to my infantry on the ground. Fair point. Aircraft doesn't take territory, infantry wins battles. And finally, at long last, we see the first bit of um, indirect fire support coming out for the French. Not sure. I think it's just a 60mm mortar. Uh, yeah, I want, to say it's a, I want to say it's a very small stove, yeah. but I might be wrong. Yeah, I think it's like a 60mm mortar you can get in any phase. But, yep, yeah, it's definitely Winchester bug at this point, because, yeah, there we go, at long last. Maybe he was just using that to abuse their attack moves. Mm-hmm. Which, if, if that's exactly what he's doing, that's absolutely insane. I don't think I've ever seen someone do that before. Definitely, definitely a bit of an unorthodox strategy, yeah. I want my plane to get shot at. <laughs> exactly. That's the plan. Says no one ever. Uh, Panhard, oh, sorry, 204. Ooh. Wannabe Panhard is uh, just racing on through there. I'm not sure I'd really want to be that close. Oh, no, they revealed his position. They're yep. coming out in the open, and that's not going to be particularly yep. ideal. I also want to note the uh, B2 in the middle just got completely annihilated by a six-pounder. Aw, oh, jeez. I, I was waiting for that to be, like, the... Not that Starlight brought the camels back, but definitely more... Uh, uh, more effective than it was, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, this is some lovely pushing here from Harry Spider. Madison yeah. to attack north by coming down south and then hooking around instead of going through a big open field. Yeah, that's definitely a very good play, and he's... Manson to make some very nice territories. You see, Walter's forces up north are very pulled up in its small little pocket, and it's it's just not looking too good. No, actually, I'm I'm very surprised. I think he's he sucker. He definitely suckered me, and I don't know about you, but he suckered me into thinking that the south is where the entire battle was going to be fought, and then all up and down the line, he's working the right, he's working his left, he's working the center. Yeah, Harry Spider has a lot of legs, and he's spreading them all over the map. It's not without losses, as we see, of course, one of those half-tracks going on down there. But, um, is this ground support coming in? Nope, still that same Spitfire. Yeah. Or a second one, actually. One just oh, went yeah, off. second. Definitely interesting seeing, like, a French player use Spitfires for strafing run. Because you only really see people do that with, like, Polish mm -hmm. armor division, for example. The Spitfire isn't as good for strafing, but, you know, it's, it can still strafe stuff. And trying to keep our pack 40 suppressed is definitely top priority for Harry Spider. So, I do see one of the stewards has gone down. Do we know what killed that? Down to the no, south? No, I didn't catch it. We can know he's just checking the history afterwards. Yeah, I'm just out of curiosity. Um, it does look like Walter's position is kind of falling apart. And we're actually, we are yeah. to phase B, though, too. So, we can get some of that close combat support that he's looking for, as well as that pack track moving down to the south to engage mm -hmm. armored vehicles. Um, yeah. What can happen? How, how the heck is Walter supposed to bring this back? Uh, well, on B-Face, he can get uh, RRAs, which are pretty decent mm -hmm. CQC infantry. Uh, he can get one Stug, run Panzer Four, some of those, like, red pack tracks and mortars, which will help out a bit. Mm -hmm. But I think for for Rota, he just wants to try to maybe pop his pimple in the northern middle mm -hmm. area, try to just get an infantry in it, you know, to try to get, get back a bit of ground. Yeah. Maybe try to push through the town. I think that's going to be his best bet, as that's really... Harry Spider, so it's a weak underbelly of Harry Spider at the moment. Well, the JU88 is going to come in and completely wallop this northern push. Question is, will he die? And I don't know. I, don't I sincerely know. do not know. The Spitfire doesn't have a good angle on him. No, he doesn't. Moment. And it's a wide turn. It's a very wide turn. I'm going to say JU188 is going to get out of here. It's going to be real close. It's going to be very close. That 188 doesn't have much. Ooh. Oh, wow. Yeah, yep. he's, he's smoking, but he's, he's making it out. Um, and so, are we going to see that infantry? Where's that infantry coming in? Okay, I think we have an ROA coming in the south. I might be wrong. I think, yeah, they, they start with one star, I want to say, right? Yeah, they the one star veteran the ROA. I don't know. I think I may come in, like, like a, another track, but... I, I thought it was Opal Blitzes, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, I don't want to waste too much on the Russians, of course. <laughs> and I, I have to laugh about the Bavaria Wings carrying their, their Bren wannabe, the FM-24. Oh, yeah. oh my That's gosh. That's such a... That's a, I mean, yeah, it's pretty much a Bren gun statistically. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. And it does look like Harry Spider's trying to set up Walter for a knockout blow, though. We have ourselves a nice big Sherman coming on in, the M4A3 upgun. Um, Mortar, in the meantime, is starting to shell the German positions to 81 mil, by the way. If we have the 60, 60 mil, I want to say, who's the 60 mil? Is that, that the British stuff, basically, right? 60 mil is American. Oh, uh, the I, Brits have, like, a small 50 mil. Okay. All right. I'm not sure who the 81 millimeters from, then. Oh, then I 80, guess... 80... I think both German. 81 is American. 83, I, think... I want to say, was a German. I think a German was either 80 or 82. I know the Russian was 82 or something. I don't know. I don't know. I, if memory serves, though, there were a couple of guys who went and made their calibers slightly different yeah, to that way. It was the Russians, okay. That yeah, was the Russians who did, yeah. And yet, there's the ROAs coming into the north. Yep, those guys had that one star and they're in the Opal Blitzes. So we can see them deploying down to the south as well. Ooh, half, not half track. Anti air position does go down, and the German mortar is a 50 mil. Yeah, that's a small 50 mil, yeah. But it's um, not going to do rail against an 81 mil. Doesn't yeah. Range. Yeah, well, especially if we don't have any HE. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Maybe it would make him, like, cough to death. Well, you know what? They say that smoking kills. It does. Oh, D520 going after this Spitfire. Oh, oh, the D5 does have the turn advantage, and J. <laughs> Okay, if the one you if the one eighty eight ever gets an airplane kill, I think I would probably. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be oh, close. The five twenty yeah. five twenty is gonna get something here. What a dog fight? That's one. And the five twenty, as much as we malign that thing, somehow getting a kill. It's it's yeah it's it's not the best fighter by any means, but it has the best turn radius in game. So, in a dog fight, it will be me. It will be able to get behind anything, which is nice. It just doesn't have the firepower to do much. I want to say I think the, didn't the Japanese take some German airplanes at some point? I want to say the Hayabusa, the army, the army airplane. I think was based on the 520. I might be wrong on that one. I'm sure someone out there's gonna set me straight. But for some reason, I thought like the 520 was definitely used as a, a Japanese platform. I don't know. I think I think it's French. Ooh, really? Okay. Maybe, I there we go. Then I'm com I'm happy you sent me straight though. That that makes you feel good. All right. It means I know the knockoff 88's back on the field. The Flak 36 things I could do. Diddly squat. Yeah, it's gonna keep the skies clear, or at least. You know, I, I desperately, desperately wish that the flak guns of this caliber, no pun intended, um, were a little bit more effective in shocking away the airplanes. I feel like they're always very underpowered as it pertains to air power. Uh, I'd say, I'd say in a pretty good spot, really. I mean, the DPS behind it, though. I mean, if you watch how much they stress out compared to... Um, the, the, the Flak 36s, the Brovovins, the Ostvins, like those, those kinds of, the multi-cannon platforms as opposed to, you know, the that's one shot. They shoot faster. Yes, just, yes. Just, you know, like lots of small things, and then like, you know, the one big thing only happens every now and again. Well, you know, all the small things in truth care, it, it, that, that, what it brings, really, is that, mm -hmm. um, I'd rather take one lift than, uh, all that other extra stuff, I suppose. Um. Oh, look, he's got shots in the French mortar piece, yo. Ooh. Very tight shot. You know, the mortar piece is now moving, but damn, that was that was tight. Jeez. I was I was, I was distracted by the 520 coming in and being sent right back out without doing anything whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Casual little flyby at best. Ooh, and a 155 off map Colin is here, which means the Germans are gonna really be losing their positions pretty quick. Oh. Center west. This is not looking good for Walter at all. He's really been on the defensive entirety of this match. Which makes sense, because he's the, you know, the Paris Defense Division. But True. maybe when C phase hits, he will have the forces, the pantograms, the heavy tanks. Okay, see, wait, there we go. See, one shot, watch the, watch the stress. Very minimalistic. I think. Absolute, oh, never mind, okay. No, you but the point that. being is that he got maybe 10, 15% of the absolute most. It just it doesn't seem to do enough bang for the buck, in my mind. Fair enough. As a dedicated anti-tank platform, I mean, yeah, by all means. But, oh, the 520s get another kill? And I dare say it's going to happen again here, too. I think it is. They get him right behind him. There he goes. Yeah, that's Spitfire's toast. Which is a huge deal. That's a that's a lot of, of suppression being lost right there. During a battle of Britain, Luftwaffe didn't need Messerschmitt 109s, it just needed a bunch of D5 trennies. 
in, in, or <laughs> more modern bombers. Um, a second 188 has been and purchased. A second 188 has been purchased, and this is the only way he's even able to hold on to the territory he's got currently, yeah. which is kind of shocking. Yeah, he's inflicting some good casualties against the French, and like I already say, the French don't have that much infantry. They are going to run out eventually, especially if Harry's been using them. Like up north, like all the infantry has pretty much become toast. But Rorto, he has reserves and reserves to rely on. But the main thing is, is Harry Spider, he's meant to keep his more, you know, scary units alive, such as the tanks, the bloody mm -hmm. 76 Sherman. Yeah, 76 Sherman is going to be vitally important later in the game to try to keep away the Axis heavy tanks. Or you've also seen the two-star Stug being brought out, so maybe that can be just the firepower that water needs to push through. Yeah, you say that, but um, between the six pound, excuse me, yeah, well, 57 mil in this division, but six pounder as well as that AT and RT, um, I, I don't know if the stroke's going to be enough. In fact, you'll see it, yeah. he's right on the edge of that artillery, is going to go right back into it, too. So there's going to be a lot of HP damage being done there. Yeah, and there goes the anti aircraft gun getting popped by the Sherman. Indeed. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think Walter is... Probably should consider giving up the, the, the City of Lights here pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, 520 coming on in desperately, trying to be the discount Spitfire. And you can see how little he does in terms of panic. <laughs> yeah, not a good strafing plane. Only does 4 HE damage, so I believe Spitfire does 6 at least. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, because he's got 220 mils. But the now, force in the middle... Watch team. the pack track get taken out by the artillery strike. That'd be awful. I mean, obviously for oh, Walter, but I'm just that he's, he's insane. Good. Ooh, do you see that pack 3 that got snuck in? I didn't even see that come on in. In the middle? Yeah. Yeah, it's just been held fire the entire time. But now he's been spotted, and he is forced to retreat. Yes, he is. Um, so, like you said, it seems like the entire goal here is just to exhaust the French infantry and then desperately try to counterattack, but when we see things like this... DCA M15, um, like you saw, all the extra tanks. Mm -hmm. Will Walter have enough punch? Yeah that's, yeah, that's exactly the thing. Walter's been taking quite a lot of casualties. And, meaning, he, the, the nice heavy tanks are nice, but you need to have all the other stuff still alive to help support it. Like, he can't just... I mean, he, is, he did get the Panther now. And maybe up north with his northern force, he could push into his open field. That would be definitely nice. Because you just got to realize, in a French, in the open field, like a full-on open field, max range engagement, they can't kill the Panther. And they yes. only have 13 AP. But you got to get there first. You got to get there first. It is the difficult part. And Harry oh, Spider does have good positions. This could be an amazing um, gun a bombing run, or it's going to be awful. And it's awful. I was just yeah. that that'd be perfect. You might have been able to get just behind that attack. That would have been absolutely insane. Yeah. But nope, the South is going to be able to fall back and fight another day. They have also really need to make a push. He's down by almost 900 points. And I think he's really going to bank it on this Northern Assault. And I think that will be the best for him. That sounds about right. Stroog is desperately trying to support the ailing German infantry in the center here. And I think I think Harry Spider though is definitely playing to his advantage though too. The French do have a range advantage for the most part. Those those machine guns reach out and touch people, and like you said, the Paris does not have the same kind of MG uh, support yeah. that would otherwise need. Yeah, at, at close range tank fights, Harry Spider really has the advantage, and also stabilizers and the Shermans and spirits etc. It helps out quite a bit. Well, really, Walter, I mean, he's doing his northern push at the moment. It's, all, it's really going to come down to his northern post. We are seeing a two-star 76 being brought out. Uh -huh. Which will be quite a bit of a pain in the ass to deal with. Especially if he's managed to position it behind a tree line or something. So he can wait for the pam to get closer and get a close range shot. But max range engagement, Shermans can't really do much. They're going to have to get at least one kilometer range to have a somewhat decent chance of penetration. I mean, yeah, even from the straight stats by itself. Yeah. Uh, a small blessing for him, um, the Sapphires have been pushed away, which means that a lot of the devastation that could have befallen that particular panther, well, that, that's a little bit less. And I do like mm -hmm. we finally see some proper combined armed tactics to the north. Alf Clero kind of moving on in to screen. We have 
the lighter vehicles there. We have Landis Schutzen to walk and take hits. Yeah. That, this, is, this is how you do it. Exactly. It is, yeah, it's bringing up more infantry to help out in this fight. It's just Ropey really be able to push fast enough. Because that 76 Sherman managed to get into a good defensive position. And oh, it's going to be engaging with the Panther. And yeah, the Panther's going to have the advantage on it. And Harry Spider knows that. He's going to pull back. Yes, well, he has been able to take out the Stug in the meantime. I think the Stug went down courtesy Oof. of that uh, 76 mil. We also took Oof. out the pack track as well. Yeah, it's um, middle. Yeah, it's it's real <laughs> bad. Yeah, it's really bad. There's nothing there's nothing here to stop it. It's not... Harry Spider's going to be flanking this northern assault with his Greyhound in 76. And, oh, if he manages to flank our Panther G, that would, that would not be pretty. No, it would not. They try to bomb the 76 as it's heading up north, but only managed to knock it down to half morale. Well, had he been able to hit it head on, it'd been a much different story. But I think moving north south it definitely saved him. Can you imagine being another 50 meters back and seeing him right along that curve as opposed to coming out of that turn? It'd been a completely different story. Mm hmm. I thought for a second we see some desperate anti tank tactics happening here, but no, the infantry goes down, which is going to keep. The Germans completely isolated. Oh, this this Panther's buggered. I mean, he, he's cut off from his uh, main line, so all the units inside the area pretty much have a pretty big morale debuff. But mm -hmm. they're, they're not doing good. No, they're certainly not doing well at all. Um, what was that? I mean, okay, another two or four big stink deal. Yep. And now we're down to the Phileas pocket in the north, really. <laughs> Which, which oh, you think yeah. about it, it's kind it of is. it's kind of a, appropriate too. There's like one tank, a few, you know, a handful of infantry. Yeah, these guys are yeah. Yeah, and they're being surrounded by a bunch of foreign troops. Oh god, this is the Panther's going to try and break back towards his own lines, but only only gripe I have right now. This is when you should be pushing the Sherman from the west as well. Yeah, only gripe. That's it. Oh yeah, because he could get a good like rear shot in that Panther at least. Mm -hmm. But yeah, here he goes. Uh, he's going to be engaging the Greyhound. Greyhound's going to get first shot, of course, deal. bounces, and kaboom. The foreseeable yeah, death, yeah. Germans going to get... Germans trying to move up to attack. Oh, this is, this is risky. But the Panther's firing at the obvious target. There we yeah. go. Okay, so now what's left? Now we see another GU-188 trying to go after the Sherman. As the same time, we see the Lightning moving on. As both guys are going after the heavy <laughs> battle tank. And no, he goes down. Oh, the Western thanks, Sherman boss. gets it. Oh, that was... That was a really beautiful, like, flank maneuver from Harry Spider. Mm -hmm. Like, he, he sees the opportunity, breaking through middle, and, yeah, I mean, you've got a Panther being brought in into the middle to try to scrounge things up, but the French just have too much ground. They, they're starting to lose units now. They don't have as much as they did before, but they, they have really good defensive positions. And there's yeah. only 14 minutes left in this match. And Harry it's plus Spider, three. Yeah, he's... Harry Spider's pretty much taking this run home. I would not be surprised to see it. Um, wait, what took out the Sherman? Was that the 204? No. Maybe. Could have been no. The no, yeah. 204 just took out the half track to the west. Hmm. I don't know, we're seeing the history tab. Indeed. Um, P4 coming on in finally at long last, and another JU-188. Please don't tell me he's gonna drop. Okay, I thought he was gonna drop his bombs pretty much everywhere, and I was gonna say, dude, buy at dinner first, do something, be a little more classy. <laughs> uh, half track, I'm probably gonna get some stress out of this, and the Sherman, of course, just says, ha ha ha. I have, you know, oh my gosh, I'm trying to think about this right now. What, 80 millimeters of armor? Are we talking about effective armor or how much physical armor there is on the tank? Yeah, whichever one's closer to my answer. Probably like 90 millimeters of effective armor. I have to admit, I probably know the German stuff a little bit better, and it's been a while since I've covered that. Um, 204 is getting nice and close, though. Who's knocked out over here on that Sherman? they got to get another guy inside. Set 4s are coming back in, though, and just outside of the range of the Zook. But yep. this is going to be a dead guy no matter how you slice it. Yeah, the M15 going to be completely su suppression. Yeah, little French recon car. And a Panther in the middle. I mean, you've also got a Tiger being brought in, so Waters is bringing in all the heavy tanks. It's not really going to work out, but at the same time, Walter doesn't really have any other tools in his arsenal to really try to dislodge the French. He doesn't... Yeah, he doesn't really get rocket artillery. No. It kind of sucks. 
I mean, maybe some candy grenades would help out. But no, he's actually, he's getting some good kills in the middle. He's almost killed a six pounder. The half track and infantry are pretty much getting hit anytime they show their face. But the 76 Sherman from the south is coming. We've got mm -hmm. another 76 Sherman coming into the middle as well. And Harry Spider, this is a good defensive position, so I don't think the D520s are going to do much here. Do you want to see this P4 in the north? Oh, I just thought the P4 in the north might have been able to take out the upgun. I mean, statistically, he can do it. It's going to be a much more difficult process. Yeah, the um, upgun does have the range. Well, you were saying, too, about Panzer Grenadiers. I don't know. Even bringing in the light MGs at this point is not going to make any difference. There's too much in the way of vehicle firepower. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's some decent Germans. The, the nice thing that Harry Spiders managed to do is he's traded efficiently the entire match. Yes. He hasn't lost a single 76 Sherman, which is important. Uh, I think he's lost one. He no, two, two, two. Oh, he's, he's lost one. And, yeah. The one in the north, at least. I think he lost a second one on top of that. So he had, I think, three going into that engagement to the north, at least. I think okay. he had lost one by then. Anyway. But he's managed to keep most of them alive and most of his tanks alive for the majority of the match. Now he's starting to take losses, but... I mean, for the last 10 minutes, it's not really unexpected for French. It's, uh, he's managed to capture the ground. He's managed to get some good kills and really slow down water enough that even if water was to push all the way through, he's not going to have enough points to really take his back. Yeah. It's not take him too long. Yeah. Yeah. And they've got all the J1 and the 88s are doing some pretty decent bombing runs as they're stressing out everything, but... Not really getting any of those important kills. Yeah, I was going to say that really the 188s have kept this a very, very amusing game. <laughs> um, yep, yep. Harry Spider has been. This would have been over 10 minutes ago without the 188s. Yeah, they've been slowing down the French just enough mm -hmm. to keep water dumb on the game. And yeah. water's back to a plus run, or losing by a plus run now, which is better than losing by a plus three, that's for sure. But still, he can't really do anything to his heavy tanks as he has nothing to screen for him. So they're just sitting around doing nothing. And that Tiger, you know, he's going to have to wait for the supply truck to come out. Can we just Ooh. also be surprised, but this is the first supply truck in the entire game. Oh. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I... I, I mean, yeah. we can certainly believe it. There's been enough losses on both sides. But I would expect that the that K... Is weird. The KD in this is probably going to be something on the order of 2 to 1. Yeah, I'm going to say so too. And that is weird how it's a first supply truck. Because that... German 50 millimeter mortar has been out of ammo for a long bloody time. But I'm not saying he's going to be able to turn things back around by itself, but he could have done something. Yeah, and even the French mortar over here, the 81 mil, he's been out of ammo for <laughs> everything. Yeah, over. you're right. Yeah, so yeah, supply trucks they're, they're usually pretty good to get. I think I'd, I'd highly recommend supply trucks. Ten out of ten. Well, the Russians are coming. Yeah. Uh, a little bit last of I think I think just meager resistance here. I might be wrong. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's fairly safe to say that Harry Spider is going up on nothing. Yeah, he's going to be taking his first match for sure. And he did he played the French really well. I mm -hmm. really love seeing that. Oh, the Tiger goes down. Yeah, got oh. declawed. Yeah, absolutely striked by the Sherman. But I really love seeing that French aggressive play. He did all the maneuver warfare. And it's a lot of fun seeing. You know, more like maneuver, you know, flexible battles rather than just a big stalemate where both sides just hit each other head on. Like, I really have yes. seen just good flanking maneuvers, and Harry Spiders managed to provide that yeah, in droves. Yeah, he's been losing quite a few planes, as his C520s have been a rather tough customer, jeez. Yeah, this actually might be the only thing that could take that 2 to 1 kill back to nothing. Yeah, I think the P38s just get my gut out. Yes, it's high to speed. Find oh, no! The... Oh, jeez. Wow, that was... That was some high flying from the D520. I really want to see the KD in those D520s, because they've been... Supreme. They've been supreme. They've been managed to at least keep the French out of the air, which is very important, because you kind of need the air power to... You kind of need to keep the air space under your control to do a J188. And another Tiger up north. Yeah, but again, yeah. that's about... 20 minutes too late. Yeah. Yeah. And Spitfires, actually, for some reason, I kind of feel like I'm surprised he has any Spitfires left. I feel like they've just been dying right, left, and center. Yeah, he's probably, like, the last one or two left. He's got a J1 and the 88 coming up north. Yo. There goes a couple of the scout cars, I imagine. 
Uh, no. Actually, oh. nothing dies. Nothing whatsoever. Do the Germans finally lose an airplane, though, is the question. That is the question. Because oh, that's, that's one area. The Luftwaffe, surprisingly enough, has been <laughs> on point. Yeah, he's going to lose that to you. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, and down she goes. Second Tiga engaging a scout car, you big bully. Mm -hmm. Do you want to take us to times two at 39? Sure, why not? Yeah. Um, I do appreciate the fact, though, that Walter is playing this out. He's not going, just tapping Three, out. to run, times two. He's not tapping yeah, out. He's he's he's, hang, he's hanging tough. He, mm -hmm. He's playing the long he, game. He's, he's doing the Bobby Fischer attack. <laughs> the par he's, he's playing true Paris defense, defending to the last man, you know? Well, <laughs> exhaust your opponent. Make him tired for the later games, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, 76 Sherman goes down. Down south. And up north. I was actually, oh, I, was the, I was the one up north. You're gonna tell the one down south. Who's who took yeah, out down uh, south? All right. Oh, yeah. nice. There we go. Way yeah. to go, Russians. That's, all right. Uh, way too late for really to make much of a difference. Show. Uh, shockingly, two more squads of infantry were coming on in. So I think we've really oh, missed. Oh, wow, It's actually pretty. Oh wow, it's really tight. Oh, probably because it's towards the end. I think. Yes, and then I would say probably because of the airplane stuff as well. Yeah, the airplane stuff helped out quite a bit. Looking at the kills for the French, yeah, the 76 has really been the MVPs for Harry Spider, yeah. Manson to knock out pretty much all the tanks. All the tanks. Yeah. And then um... looking at the losses, yeah, D520, one of them shot down two Spitfires on the P38, which is... The other one got another Spitfire, another Lightning. So Lightning yeah. struck twice. Um, mm -hmm. Spitfire's been down. A nice little trip kill right there. Yeah. Wow. But nothing yeah. else. Nothing else punched out above its weight. That was a problem. Mm hmm. That was that was a bit of a problem with water. That's that's a tough thing with Paris. Is that it's hard to get back in momentum after really being pretty defensive mm -hmm. for all those first twenty minutes. I mean, you can do offensive maneuvers, but you're like an infantry division. You're very slow. We're doing those offensive maneuvers, and you don't have enough tanks to throw a raid to be able to do it because you want to get like one per tank, really, unless you get a bunch of crappy like Renault 40 35s. But a uh, very good play from um, from Harry Spider. I do want to just answer a few questions, Joe, that I got on chat. Go for I don't know, right? Dem uh, Dimitri, I have no idea why your message was retracted, I didn't do that, but th these games are kind of live, they're semi live. So the games are being played right now as we speak, but we're just doing the replays after. We're not casting them live, live, because there's this user of that essentially. Well, the client it's itself is it's a little, yeah, it's, it's buggy. We've had this user of it before, and we'd rather just play it safe and just do the replays essentially. And yes, the the Sherman at the end got killed by RRE mm -hmm. and the yep. Tiger. So I think that's all I have to say for this match. Uh, that certainly seems fair. Um, I think what we will do then, we're going to kick it on over to the pause screen for just a second. So folks, don't go away. More of the finals action is going to come to you. Um, but uh, we'll be back in just a second. Yep, we'll see you again. Four minutes in D. Okay. Okay, three, two, one, play. Well, folks, we're back with game two over here of the season two finals. We are going into the town of St. Mariglise, and it looks like we're going to have a little bit of a uh, an identity swap here. What do we got going on? These we are. So Walter will be playing as the French this time on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, Harry Spider will be playing as the 91st Luftlander Division. So we're going to see if Walter can pull off the same French victory as uh, Harry Spider did, and he looks like he's playing pretty heavily up north. And one thing I am noticing that's that's very similar about both their bills is that we are going to see a lot of flame troops early on. Mm hmm Which makes sense in that town. You've got to yes, burn, baby, does. burn. But yeah, it's quite funny. Walter seems like he's going to be a pretty heavy push up north. Well, uh, Harry Spider, he's got quite a lot of units down south, including an A-Phase stew. Yes. So, they're both going to be hitting into each other's uh, flanks, essentially. Oh, wow. It looks like... Oh, no, 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 no. The Germans... A lot of the Germans are going towards that town. Huh. Okay, I Interesting. It's a very nifty move. Yeah, we're going to see how this ends up playing out, I guess. Um, in fact, yeah. Four squads. We're going to get three squads and some recon troops moving on in there. I am surprised by how much French stuff is going to the north. I'd, that... 
don't get me wrong, I don't want to see a grindy fight right through the center. But would you really pick the north to try to make a breakthrough? It is tough because you got all those apple orchards as well as forest that you have to break through. Mm -hmm. It's 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 a very good defensive position. For yes, sure, for sure. And even if you look back towards the right of that position, mm -hmm. there's lots of good positions for the defender to hold on to. And in these forest close range areas with belt jagers and panther strikes, it's rather scary to push through, especially if all these apple fields. Yep. My guess is we'll probably see. Oh no! Wow, we're actually going to see some. <coughs> Flamen Werfer troops as well. I'm surprised by that. Mm -hmm. I was almost expecting to see Ulig coming on out, but that is not going to be the case. We're seeing a nice little grab bag of material. Um, yep. French Mortar is definitely going to put their hurt on the early German fortunes. And Panzer Abfeas and Shrex to the north, so I don't imagine this M8 is too long for this world. Yeah, I mean, he's... I oh, know, he is pretty much... almost. He's almost in range of the Panzer Shrek. No, not anymore. He's meant to move out of here at least. But there is a mortar. If water can just, you know, get some good mortar hits, those foul shaker troops pretty much bug it. No, look. Completely surrounded, but, you know, they're, they're power troopers. They're meant to be so, surrounded, yeah, exactly. So the foul shaker apparatus don't have that power trooper buff, yo, huh? No, they don't, but they that's are recon weird. troops. That's, I know, it's oh, weird. Oh, okay, it's because they're recon troops, I believe that's right. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. And it does look like we're going to have another Shrek squad being brought on in, or is this another Abfair squad? Oh, probably. It's got to be Shrek, I'm sure. I don't think he's going to... Oh, no, it is... Yeah, it's a Shrek squad. Okay. I'd be very surprised if he's going to invest that much into it early on, mm -hmm. but the Abfair is going to take out at least this half-track. Always holding fire, aligning. The stars align. No, he's going after this. Oh! oh! Damn. And the steward takes a habit and... He might, he might be able to get off one more round. Maybe. Probably not, though. Oh, he's going to. And, oh, that was, that was definitely worthwhile to keep that ab first squad, like, back a bit, because that paid off. Do you that think... That really paid off. Do you think that Walter got tricked by the fact they took out a Panzer Trick squad and the ab first yeah. just kind of snuck on in? Yeah, exactly. He probably thought, okay, I already killed one of them. There's no way he has two. He then proceeds to have another. But it's looking really good for Walter, yo. He's got a plus one point advantage, lots of ground up north. And, okay, stuff for the town. The town's not looking good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the map right now kind of looks like a turtle for a second, sticking his head out of a shell. Holy crap, it does look like a turtle. <laughs> that really does look like a turtle. Like, um, I'm just hiding the HUD here. Now, I mean, you've got, like, the eye, kind of. It's a bit of a weird eye, but that does... That's very turtly. I, I was going to start going for Pokemon for a second, but I realized that my, my knowledge of after first right. generation is not great. It's, there's literally an eye in the, the turtle face now. Now it Look is. Yeah, and there's a smoke thing for the... Ah, oh, that was... Alright, now we're, now we're sending this a little bit too far. <laughs> that was some steel division art. Right, yeah, but anyway, back to... I, I guess it's, it's a whole match. Oh, wait, Shrek, Shrek's in play. He's in the, Oh my gosh, the inmate's going right into him. Shots up. Bailed out. Ooh. Well done. There we go. So yeah. bailed out, that's, you know, a not as good as a wink there. Yeah, and he's going to get the finishing blow for sure. Um... Down to the yeah. south, I'm interested. The Stu 42 has not done anything. The, the Flamen Verfa, excuse me, the Flame Troops for the French have not done anything either. In fact, they're just still kind of hunkering down. No one knows where anyone else is. Mm -hmm. And it's a 50 50. The French have taken the north. The Germans have gone around them to the south once again, as in history. Well, weird, like, early five minutes of this match. Yeah. But it's a good play from Harry Spider. As you realize that, okay, Walter pretty much put all those eggs up north. I'm going to try and push down south. And even though he's not, you know, mechanized Rama division, he's managed to grab a lot of ground very quickly. Well, and I do think that Walter's made the right call. Um, we do see a Wolverine coming on in the M10. Uh, and, and, and frankly, that's going to be more than enough to measure up against any single, you know, Stu, obviously. Yeah, for sure. That's going to be more than enough firepower to really deal with anything. It's just he needs infantry as well to help route out those foul shakers. Those foul shakers are a pain in the ass to fight one on one. Now, interesting that we see an air, anti-air piece being brought onto the center part of the map. In fact, going to the southern side of that town, I can't help but wonder if it might not be a better idea to set it up inside the little, let's say, complex where the foul makers were previously, just a few seconds ago. Yeah. And use that to suppress the north. You have some great obvious fire lanes i would say mm -hmm. and um even that that horseshoe keeps your troops in relative safety 
Yeah, it does. It does. Very nice little farmhouse. Yeah. It'd probably be blown up before the match ends. <laughs> I think it'd probably true with that. I've I have little doubt there. Um no. Oh yep, and there's there's the flak thirty eight. He's gonna be engaging that Stuart and he's not gonna do anything to it. Yeah. What a shame. And very slowly walking back home. Good plan. Now, one thing already we are seeing differently between Walter versus Harry Spider's play is that uh, I would say the French are not quite as, as um, conservation-minded as... Yeah, he's lost yeah. some pretty big stuff. Like, losing both of those greyhounds is a pretty big deal so early on. And yes, rip the turtle forbidden archives. It's now like... It's like jello pudding now. Mm. Yeah. Well, Thanksgiving's coming up soon, so I'll take that. Oh, yeah. That's fine. Um... In the meantime, though, Shrek Squad and Foster Makers, again, they're going to hold that fort. And the Germans, shockingly enough, have not really bled too much for this town. No, they have not. And down south, Harry Spider's got a pack 40. And really kill... He almost killed the M10, yeah. He's going to get one more shot. Oh, nope, no. Nope, nope. Just the tree lane blocking his line of sight. And Spitfire's coming in. Four, yeah, streak and run. And the Flak 38 says, okay, I don't really... Oh, oh, there he is. My bad. <laughs> And the Stu is just going to keep the M10 running, which is totally fine. He's at 28 yep. rounds of HE. That'll be fine. Yeah, that Stu's in a lovely position. Because you yes. can shoot stuff coming down the road, too. Which, I mean, you only get, like, one or two shots. It's not the best line of sight. But, you know, you can easily just pull back and hide. That's a really good position to play that Stu. Oh, and let's, be, let's, let's also be very, very cognizant of the fact that while it's not a, like you said, great line of sight looking to their arterial to the north, even if you shock and slow down the infantry coming in on trucks, for the most part, that gives you an inordinate force force advantage. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Now, we are going to see Falsh Makers asserting their dominance for quite a bit of time yet. Um, ooh, wait, there's a B3 to the north, takes out a Stewart. <laughs> and only three rounds as well. Of course, there's a Spitfire now, so um, yeah. probably not going to make it out. Pretty close. I don't know, he has enough distance, at least, to maybe get out. It's close. It's going to be super, super close. No, I think I read someplace that the Spitfire Oof. had... Oh, just at the end. Spitfire oh. had enough ammunition for something like 16 seconds of consecutive fire. I don't know if yeah. that's true or not. That seems like such a small amount of time. Good it's, lord. It's, yeah, those fighter airplanes, even today, they just don't carry a lot of ammo. Well, at this point, I most... Uh, I don't really want to risk my life on cannon fire, I think I'd rather go with the missiles that I think we carry now. Same here. Same here. Yeah, Shoot. but I'm losing that B3. Please. It's huge. That's 200 points, as yeah. Mickey just pointed it out. And that's a very useful tool for knocking out tanks. So, yeah. And they only killed an 80-point shirt of it, so not, not the best rate, unfortunately, for Harry Spider. But no. he's making good progress down south. He's pretty much cut off the town entirely. But I'm happy he's making progress down south, because to the north he's getting his but whooped. Yeah. So how does he reverse this? What does he do? Uh, Harry Spider? Yes. Uh, probably try to retake the northern side a bit. It's, I mean, he has tank advantage, as even at 139H, can pretty much kill everything up north, because only water has stuff yet to slow down a push, but not enough to really stop a push. It's just meat grinder voter gears and half tracks that he has to break through. And he can do that. We've got one Stuart being brought in now, but it's going to take him a bit of time to get to the front line. And Harry Spider has the town, pretty much. Kind of. It's, it's, <laughs> he's it's, it's, he's it's got like, shattered squads. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure I'd say he has the town. I think, I'd say he has a, a tenuous grip, to be sure. But uh, calling that he's got it, I'm a little I'm a little shaky on that. I know. It's a bit it's a bit weird. At the same time, you know, it's only Voda Gears and stuff in there. It's not exactly... I mean, it's one, two men playing for a squad, but that's, that's really it. Yes, but you have one Falschmager, and the emphasis is on one. And you have Ersatztruppen, which are going to fold quicker than a cheap card table. <laughs> yeah. Especially um, under Flame Attack. Those guys are going to get completely wrecked. Like, usually, like, this far into a match, I usually feel like I have a good idea who has a chance, like, the best chance to get in a victory. But at this point, I have no bloody idea. Like, yeah. this is still anyone's game. Like, yep. Both sides have been given and taken just as much. And we are into phase B now, too. Mm -hmm. So, uh, some real good flame troops moving on to the front as we speak. 
And I don't know. I actually, I don't, I don't think the Germans are not going to hold on to the territory. They've got, they've, they fought back to a 50-50 split here. But they're going to lose this town and with it 2 or 3% pretty easily. It's going to be a plus 1 again for Walter. Yeah. Uh, but there another AA piece come being brought into this. Oh no, he's being redeployed, I think. Nope, never mind. That's a different AA piece altogether, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's a different one. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty cheap. They're only 40 points. You can just buy buy and buy a handful. I, I am amused by the fact that the Stu 42 is going to be engaging the town from the west. <laughs> I'm still here, guys. <laughs> I, I'm a relevant force, I swear. Um, And the half track's on, them, on a little bit of a, a jaunt around the world here. Yeah. Going after the Kubelwagen, and the Flak 38 might be able to turn him into mush, or he might go out. We'll see. No, the Stu's coming. Weapons jammed. Pack 40. You know, it'd be kind of nice. I'd love to see the Germans get a Sturmtaga in one of these versions. I'd... I would love to see that. Still Division 2. Yes. It'd probably be a decent chance. I bet, like, in a DLC in Steel Division 2, they add, like, a Warshaw DLC, and then, boom, Sturmtaga, done. You, just, you can just ripe out an entire city block in one shot. Well, come on. I mean, the Allies get the Avra. I know. I, I really want to see Sturmtaga 2 come. It'd be, I mean, it's got like, I mean, Company of Heroes 2 is in, but it's not uh, Company of Heroes 2. Even yeah, no, 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 it, it, is, it is Company of Heroes 2. Yeah, it's a lot of fun in that game. People people gripe about the Death Starness of it all, but you know what? It's really hard to not enjoy it too, too much. Yeah. So I like seeing big explosions come out. I'm a, I'm a simple man. When With something goes needs. boom, mm -hmm. I'm like, that's cool. That's kind of like the half track just now. Yeah, kind of like a half track going boom. Obligingly putting himself 250 meters away from an anti-tank gun. That, that's kind of a, a tough sell. Yeah. Uh, Flak 38s, uh, they do not have the ammunition to force back the Spitfires. And again, we are seeing... I wonder if Walter just is kind of like, you know what? I just got strafed to death this past match. You know what? It's probably a good idea for me to do it myself. Yeah. I'm going to shoot some right last time. Mm -hmm. Do it again. Yeah. If at first you succeed, definitely do it again. Mm-hmm. Ooh, so Pack 30 is engaged on Stuart to the north. He may not have long for this world. He's going to get stressed out pretty darn fast. Yeah. And Stuart does not have enough HTA at range to do really anything to the Pack 38. I'm surprised he wasn't trying to engage with the machine guns. I guess he was a little bit out of range just yet, still, yeah, wasn't he? he was, yeah, he had to get within 600 meters. And that oh, Pack 38 was... 650 or 700, yes, yeah. Yeah. Just out of range. Botikia is being forced on in. I'm surprised still this M10 is still alive. I mean, he's been thoroughly um, declawed, but I'm, I'm, su I'm surprised he's still alive. Yeah, now he's pretty much forced to stay all the way at the back and just try to lob shots at a distance. Not going to be the best all the way back here, yeah, because it's HG value for the cannon. It's not the greatest, but at least it's still alive. It can, it's going to stop that Stu from just completely... No, saying, hey, it's open ground, I can push through. No, he's sure. not. But sure. this is still such a, such a bizarre match. I mean, Harry Spider's now pushing through, he's getting a plus run. And as the longer the game goes on, Harry Spider does have the advantage, because French runs out of stuff. Well, still, like, Water has a good point advantage lead. Well, not anymore, he's got a oh. plus two over here. Wow, how did that just all vanish? Yeah, up north. Like I said earlier up north, it wasn't anything to really defend. It's just stuff to slow down Harry Spider. And if you just get enough hearse out to troop and you can really take anything. <laughs> Quantity has a quality all, all of its own. Exactly. exactly. Fair enough. Uh, I, I would like to see these guys start to engage in Nueve troops, but Nueve's, uh, they're, they're pretty much worthless at this point. Mm -hmm. Pack 38 engaging the M8s, and while we probably will see the Panzer go on down... I think De Gaulle will get one last laugh. Oh, never mind. Baton, sorry. Look at the wrong side of that. Um, some more infantry being brought to the center. Nothing too shaky. I'm, actually, wait. Pioneers. Actually, we haven't seen a whole lot of pioneers. We've shown pioneers, but not pioneers, pioneers. Yeah, because pioneers going to have power in the town. But at the same time, water has sappers. And pretty much the same thing. With, you know, the sapper and everything. So... 
It's going to be a big ass Gravitos in that. It's like a Call of Duty Road at War. Indeed. Match. M10 goes down, by the way. Pack 40 finally took that out. Uh, Bring in an M4A2. So a slight difference in build overall. We're not going to be seeing the upguns of previous times here. Mm -hmm. Oh, off map. Yes. I was just going to call that out as well. A 210 coming on in, which means that that town's going to vanish in a puff of smoke and flame. Mm hmm. The off map is definitely what Harry Spider needs. It's just. just the little kick he needs to take out town. If he holds that town, he's in a really good position. And so if you hold the town, you can push up north and capture it extremely easily. I believe the stew is going to go down. Yeah, he's he seems pretty buggered. Unless a pack forty can come in just in time to save him, but I don't know if it be the case. Can but you know what? Even if the Sherman starts to chase, you might see some really, really great sight lines here. In fact, I think that's exactly what's going to happen. If the Sherman's trying to chase the shoe. Mm-hmm. And wow, that, that nearness of that, you know, AT shell. <laughs> yep. Pack 40's not going to get there in time. No, he's not. He has quite a bit to go still. And yep, the shoe's biking. A valiant effort by him, but Terry Spider is almost getting all of his eight legs into the town. He still has it pretty much surrounded. Mm -hmm. I am surprised by how this has not turned into a cauldron battle just yet. We will see a return strike there. Harry Spider loving that off map, and that's going to give it some great legs. There we go. Yeah, and he's bringing in some infantry just in time to try and... Mop up the forces. Your water shepherds are being unaffected by the off map. Who's going to get a second off map to try to get them out of the buildings? The yes. Sherman's there, and he's in a really good position now, Sherman. Yeah. Well, the get nice off. thing about it too. Ooh, Martyr moving on in. Okay. Oof. Oh yeah, down down range. Yeah, the Martyr. The experience is a clear shot down the road. Yes, it is. So the Martyr will have a fun time. And technically, Sherman doesn't see him. A driver wounded! This could be it, folks. Andrew Shrek moves back. If he had just rushed forward, that could have been a very different engagement. Mm -hmm. Another barrage. There goes the tank. But there goes a lot of the French infantry, too. Oof, yeah. We've got some grenadiers being brought in to try and mop things up. Just take back the town. And uh, Harry Spider's position south of town is beautiful. With the Pack 40 yeah. It's going to be very hard to bring up reinforcements. I dare say you're right. I am I'm enjoying seeing him using different kinds of artillery. We're so used to seeing the cluster, like we know exactly where the, the shells are going to be going. No, he's been calling quick TOT barrage. He's been doing the scatters. Mm -hmm. And he's been using them all, I think, for the most part, except for the, the placement of that first one. His off-map for both games, one and now the second one, have been fantastic. Yeah, they've been very good call-ins, and now... With the rest of the infantry reinforcements being brought in, I think he's going to have enough to retake that town, or, or take it. No one really held the town for the majority of the match. Church is gone. Oh, yeah. Oh. And that was one shell. One shell just landed on the church, and it turned into, like... Oh my gosh, not where Eagle's there. What's the, what's the one about the Germans trying to kidnap Winston Churchill? Donald Sutherland? Oh, Michael Caine? Who dare The Eagle has landed. Yeah, the Eagles landed, yeah. I had to yep. watch that movie. That's a fantastic movie. That's Just, a, it's so, it's movie. goofy, but it's good. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> you're, thinking, you're thinking where Eagles Dare, which is another great movie, yes, too, but good different one, reason. Yeah. Oh, man. I need, to, I need to have, like, a World War II movie marathon. Yep. Dude, those 1970, like, nine, late 1960s World War II movies were on bloody point. Yeah. That's really a golden age of World War II movies. Yeah. Kelly Zeros. Longest Day. Longest Day. Worth stuff. <laughs> about about 80% of Midway and, and the music from 1941. <laughs> That's tora, it. Tora, Tora. <laughs> tora, Tora, Tora. Again, you're not going to get a better movie than that about Pearl Harbor. Know. F you, Ben Affleck. Um, <laughs> Harry Spider is up. He's up about 100 tickets now, and that, that that's only getting bigger. It's by the grace of God that Walter's not under a plus two here. Mm -hmm. It's really just that one... Fearless. Fearless half-track, and Ulig will take him on. Oof. Ulig's going in. He's going to go for the softball. Ladies and gentlemen, I think he's going to get the toss. Nope. Ulig. 
Ooh, Ulik, turn, 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 my friend. Oh, jeez. Oh, attack move, please. please I know, please, move. not, no, Ulik, not you. <laughs> no! <laughs> uh, the pioneer's gonna come and then... I throw my grenades at it. Search. This right there we go. Even the, uh, oh, for a ball. Like for a ball in the oh. sky. I mean, 109's like crazy. Got the Spitfires. And the ground fire might take out one of these Spitfires. But one of them's definitely going to go down to the match. Yes, screen. he is. And the other one might, and... he might. Deflection. Here comes the deflection. He's gone. Oof. Oof. And the pack 40 put the Abusier. He's comp he's target tracks and wheels are damaged. Wow. Yeah, this is a. Uh... But yeah, at this point, Water has just ran out of steam of the French. He had a really good push going early on, but now it's just, he has nothing. Harry Spiders managed to grind him down quite a bit. Well, compare and contrast this for a second. What would have been a better usage of points? Because we, we have seen some minor differences here and there. We finally are seeing the upgun 76 mils. What? How could Walter have built this deck a little bit more appropriately? Uh, it's... And of course, it's it's, it's hindsight had, 20, 20, 20, of I course. I know, he had a really good, like, advantage up north, but... Mm -hmm. at the same time, Harry Spider just pushed down south really well, and... I think a mortar piece down south would have helped out, trying to, like... Uh, root out those AT guns, so... Water could bring in just some Sturge or some tanks, just slowly take back to the southern side. Fair. I think that's what Water... That's one of the things Water definitely could have done to try and... Bring us back, but, uh... He's pretty much he's pretty much buggered at this point. It's, yep. it's also the problem with French. Like compared to previous match, so Harry is playing French. He was constantly moving in all directions, and he kept on the pressure. But oh god, seventy six now goes down to the yep. big three. Complete air priority from Lifland. Well, Walter he had a really good offensive maneuver up north early on, but after that he. He wasn't really making those plays, mm -hmm. and uh, just looking at. Wow. Yeah. 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 Damn. Really good player from Harry Spider. Looking at the kills. Not really much from the French. Pretty pretty even stuff. And losses. A panther strike. Jesus Christ. He even killed infantry. Cola. Uh, find him a second. Oh yeah, could have. There we, yeah, there we go. Two half tracks, the faulty gears, set fours, and yeah, he picked up a Sherman as well. Good lord! Wow, that's nutty. Absolutely nutty. And plots the the pack forty. Even though he only has two kills, he was stressing guys out right, left, and mm -hmm. center. Like he he definitely was a very very good play. He was in such a good position. Yes, such a bloody good position. But well, uh. As in history, I mean, history, of course, you take a look at it overall, and really, after about minute, in the, in the middle of about 17 minutes, that's when everything goes to the dogs. After that point, the Germans lose less than five troops for the rest of the match. <laughs> yep, in the cis infantry, it's nothing really too crazy either. But damn, that was... I mean, that was a nice thing we to try to do early on, but it just, it really faded out. Yes, it that did. Was, yeah, but that's going to bring it to zero for Harry Spider, so all he needs is one more victory, and he will take the cup. Yep, or... let's see if we get yeah. to, if it takes the cake or not, but for right now, let's uh, take it on over to another quick break. Folks, we'll be right back with Game 3. Alright, folks, uh, Map 3, we're going a little bit more Mountain Goaty right about now, I believe we're on Ma Mount Ormel. So I'm definitely kind of excited for this rank. Who do we have going on now? Well, on the left hand side in blue, we have Harry Spider representing the Canadians. And on the right hand side, Water will be the first SS Division. So you saw this and you started rubbing your little claws together, I, I heard. Why, what makes you so excited about this matchup? I know, I really seen Canadians being played as a, the, no, I'm not the best division, I think, but it can be a lot of fun. And I also like this map because it just gets all it just gets absolutely crazy with all the CQC firefights and everything going on. Yeah, Walter, he he has to win this match or he is down for the count. So really be able to pull something off through the first SS, which is a pretty good division. And on this map, he I think he has a pretty decent chance. That's true. We were talking about right before this came back live. Actually, I'm very much amused by the Stug attack orders. 
look at the eastern side. Um, <laughs> move, attack, 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 attack. <laughs> um, but I, I think, I, as much as I love this map too, I'm always so concerned that this is going to turn into one flank goes wildly towards one side and one flank goes wildly towards the other. And, and yeah. really, that, that central ridge has such a commanding presence. It does, it does. Kind of like the town in St. Mary Glees, if you can hold the middle, you have really good pathways up north and down south. It really allows you to pick your you know, next area you want to attack. But the Canadians, he this is Piat Tiffy, right? That's, that's, yeah. that's a lot of Piat Scrodge being brought out. Which is a good call, because this is first assess, and you've got studs and light vehicles that you have to contend with. I know this is a minor gripe, but I'd love to see the Piat symbol be changed. Yeah. There's something resembling a Piat. Yeah, like a, like a like a red sponge. Yeah, or a noodle. I'll take a noodle. noodle. A limp noodle. I'll take a noodle. <laughs> uh, well, first one's out. It's up, and I believe it's gonna be good. No, it doesn't nope. quite get a kill. <laughs> Never mind. Nope. Um, I I am surprised by the spam that's been able to come out though. Good gosh. Yes, I mean, both sides have a lot of good cheap infantry options and cheap vehicle options, and I look at the folk torture. He's in a pretty decent spot. As he runs across the street. Yeah. Because if anything comes up the hill, he just gets panzer fausted. Perhaps, but folks, didn't your mother tell you you look both ways before you cross the street? Here comes the command carrier. He's going to start gunning him down. First Faust is up, and actually nothing happens. Never mind. Stormtroopers coming on in, so I imagine oh. those Volkswagen are just going to get completely Shrek. Yep, and close range sniped as well. Jeez. Yeah, that, I, you know, I kind of wonder why it takes him so long to shoot when he's about 100 meters away. It's just snow scoop at that point. Yeah, exactly. 360 it, man. Yeah. Um, um, get the camera. <laughs> With the light vehicles, oh, the first SS are dominating early on here. Taking yeah. out a lot of those command carriers, as you might expect. We're seeing a very plucky Staghound AA <laughs> trying to come in and around the back here. And a Flampanzer moving on in, too. Yes. 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 Do you love seeing that Flampanzer? And if you can just bring it in the middle, that's just going to dominate all the infantry. Unless the sign count IA has something to say about it. I think he will. Yep. I think he has a lot to say about it. But the question is, will he actually be able to do anything? And from this range, my guess is that answer nope. will be no. No, the Flampanzer are just completely flamming him. Jeez. I wasn't expecting that. I thought the sign count... Bro, he killed it! Yeah, he actually, he actually blew it up. <laughs> what? You I animals. I was not expecting that. Jesus. I was expecting the Sackhound to completely annihilate the Flampanzer, but there you go. Yeah, I'm really shocked here. Good gosh, yeah, one, one Ram 2 being desperately brought on in. Rifle Leader throwing up Piats like crazy after that. those couple of half-tracks, as well as the mm -hmm. 222, uh, and getting taken out. So yeah. you might get your wish here. I think Walter might be able to pick up a victory, considering how well he's starting off. Yeah, he, he's starting off really bloody well, and he compared to French, you do have the good later game, Route First SS, and, I don't know, 222 just breaking right through. It's a little bit ballsy, taking that much territory, but if he can, you know, just bring in some folk to reinforcements to help support where the 222 is and the 250, he can, he can really, I don't know, just... Scream everything? Yeah, just scream bloody everything. We are going to see the Ram 2 come up the goat path over here. Uh, I don't think it's going to do anything really worthwhile, though, because it looks like the 250 and the 222 are going to be able to get into Command Carrier and their attendant infantry pretty darn fast. Yeah, and the problem with Canadians is the only real tanks is those Ram 2s. I think he can get some Humbers if he does have some Humber. Like, I think under support, things. yeah. Yeah, like under the recon. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but... Right now, as Harry Spiders is bringing out infantry, the 222 can just annihilate him in the open ground, really. And then 250, not gonna have a good time against the Ram. Nope. nope. Yeah. Yeah, you say he did a bad job of slowing him down. <laughs> but awful puns wow. aside, uh, Rifle Leader is gonna throw out a long range Piat. It's up! Oh my gosh, he actually hit him, too. It's, he didn't kill him, but he hit him. He, that, yeah, that, that's works. definitely a, a charred paint job. Mm hmm. The ramp's gonna come in. Yeah, it's a little, I think water maybe shouldn't have gone as cocky with that push. If he kept him back a little bit, just and reap for the rest of his forces to come through. Oof. But in the end of the day, that was a nice amount of territory he managed to grab for himself. 
Oh, nothing else. He slows he slows down the Ram too, because had he been less, you know, gutsy, sure, he would have a much more consistent amount of points coming on in, but he gave himself a nice ticket boost by rushing for that plus two. Yeah, but now he has to worry about the Ram two in the middle. That's gonna be a rather tough customer. Yeah, but he has a stug, but Yeah, but the Stug has to redeploy to the south and already he's under underpowered by comparison in terms of armor. Yeah. And sight lines are not good right. on the southern side of that of that forest. Oh. stone pioneers are doing God's work. Indeed. Praise be. Praise be. Praise be. And now the two thirty two is trying to get in on something and the IG eighteen is desperately trying to stress out that ram. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, exactly. I just want to buy him some time. I really like the position of the IG eighteen regardless, because they mm -hmm. kind of cut you off the road towards the middle, but when there's an armored vehicle, you know, the IG-18 is actually doing pretty good. Oh yeah, because the Ram doesn't have HC shells, it has to get close and use its one machine gun to do anything. So maybe the Ram IG-18 can actually stress out the Ram too. Well, here, there's the Panzer you are thinking about. He's going to redeploy to the south, and I think he's going to get stressed out just in time. Yeah. Well, I could, if he kills the Ram too, that is pretty big bonus for water. Yes, sir, and he's fallen back, so, uh, yep, there's going to be either a surrender or a kill. Rifle leader going to be able to take another shot at this 232 as he nope. passes by. Wow. Oh! Wow, so if, if wow. a vehicle sits in one place, he can't hit him. But if he's on the move, man, he's he's a golden eye at that point. Yep, yeah, Stug has line of sight, I believe. Yes, he does. And he's going to be engaging. He has a pretty good window still, so maybe he can get that kill. Transmission damaged. One more ought to be enough. And there it is. And that was... That was tight. That's a very good kill here for Walter. You know, Harry Spider's bringing in more infantry in the middle, but it's not going to write too well against the Flam Panzers and the Stern Pioneers. And the problem with Canadians in this map is that light vehicles are, are very powerful in this map. As, yeah. Oh god. Uh, uh, unless you bring it again, once again, a yeah. tank within 200 meters, or any vehicle within 200 <laughs> meters of an anti-tank gun. Yeah. Well, the Canadians, they... Their infantry doesn't have a lot of PS. You have to get dedicated PS garage or rifle leaders for their anti-tank rows. And those are pretty easy to do, if not a complete pain in the arse. So you can just bring in, like, those fan pangers, just as long as it doesn't run right in front of a six-pounder, and do quite a bit of damage. Yes, but sir. the middle is not looking good, Joe, as Harry Spider's man's make some somewhat of a uh, breakthrough. You know, a bit slow of a breakthrough. Well, and, and this is what I'm talking about. I imagine Harry Spider's going to start to wrap up the north completely. Mm -hmm. Yes, the rifle's going to go down here. It's be a very quick surrender. But there's so many little nooks and crannies that even statistically, rifle leaders will eventually hit something with their piots. Mm -hmm. Even down to the south, there's now this flamethrower that's behind enemy lines. Uh, Panzerjägers do have the HE, but, and and there's two of them for that matter, too, yeah. but, um, I don't know, I feel like one misplaced anything, and the Germans are going to lose an awful lot. Yeah, yeah, and those Panzerjägers only have, like, six shots of HE, so, mm -hmm. you, you have to make your shots really count. Yeah, I really like Carry Spider, he has, he has a good amount of AT guns, he has a lot of bloody AT guns, actually, all over the place. And it's going to take quite a while to just uproot you. The run up north is just going to like annihilate 232. Oh no, the T32 managed to get out just in the nick of time. Well, Volks, though, sure were putting some pressure on the six pounder, so completely understandable, all things considered. Now, here's a question. This is not like supposed to be a pun or anything, or even a riddle. What's the difference between a Bren carrier and a Lloyd carrier? Uh. I mean, it looks sort of like the Lloyd carrier is about the same size and just has some, maybe like a canopy over top. Yeah, I think it's slightly. I think that's. I think they're pretty much the same thing. It's just one has a Bren gun and one doesn't. Because the 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 whole bloody or well, might have been an earlier model of the universe carrier. Because there's quite a few iterations of it, but I'm not entirely sure. I can't say off the top of my head. Okay, well, as long as you're a little bit less than sure, I'm okay with that. Um. <laughs> Puma is going to be out and about, and shockingly enough, despite the fact there's a command carrier 20 meters to his, you know, south, he's not going to engage him. I think now that's going to happen. Yeah. Now he can see him, and now he can shoot him. 
That's and gonna indeed. take back quite a bit of the map. Which may even give that plus two again. Mm -hmm. So close getting that plus two. If he can just knock out the Wraith Leader and the Sworn Trooper middle, that should give him the plus two. But he's managing to push back up north as the Folk to which uh, they got long range advantage. Canadian infantry really rely on external fire support to really do anything. And he has none of that at the moment. Oh, he's yes. got a kangaroo, but that's, that's it so far. Yeah, but I, I somehow don't imagine that's going to be necessarily too much help. Yeah. Uh, we are to phase B, though, which means that we might start seeing some legit tanks coming up here from the Canadians. Yeah. This will be a shocking thing to say, you have to be definitely sure. Yeah, some Shermans would definitely help out quite a bit on this battlefield. You've got Panzer IV being brought in from water. As at this point, he can get one of those Panzer IV Js a minute, or H a minute. He can get lots of tanks. And just spam Panzer IVs on this map, that's a very good idea. Yep. Yep, because the big armor of the Allied tanks is not going to matter. Yeah, it's just who shoots you first. At the same time, stabilizes. But if you, you can get so many tanks as first assess, it's not a huge deal. You know, I was always kind of worried. I'm actually very happy that you see Kangaroos being brought on in because they're such an overlooked unit so often. Yeah, they don't the best in point rise, but they're, they're a lot of fun. I mean, it looks so silly, but it's, it does have a nice use of, you know, a 50 cal APC. Uh-huh. I would like to see, and this is just, of course, just another random kind of, like, pipe dream. I would oh. enjoy seeing infantry be able to fire out of, yes. a, of an infantry carrier on the move. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Just, just a little bit of extra HG. Just the animation of it'd be awesome. Yeah! Yeah, Imagine even if, even if it's like, too. oh, even if there's, you know, no usage of ammo, something like that. Yeah. That'd be really cool. That'd be really bloody cool. Like, shooting a Piat out of it or something. Oh, I mean, there, there used to be a thing in, uh, I think it was Co. 1. Mm -hmm. um, Kangaroo appeared, and people would just stick Piat squads in it constantly, and it was impossible. <laughs> it was impossible to go against, at least maybe at my skill level. So, like, the flab track kind of being, uh... Company of Heroes too, where you put like an engineer squad in the farm, yeah, in, loosely. In the track. Yeah, loosely. Um, we are gonna see some Shermans being brought on in at least one already, and there's gonna be a force multiplier of immense, immense power. Mm -hmm. uh, question is, if they can take out that one Stug F to the south of that collection of Canadian troops, they have a legit chance. They do. They do. I really find it funny how that one Voigtdeutsche all the way down south is. You know, he, he's the front-line defense, and he has quite a bit to defend from the kangaroo. If he gets spotted, that kangaroo's just going to light him up. Oh, he's a picket. Yeah, he's a picket of the outline, but a very important picket is it's given him plus one point advantage. And a moment of silence for the brave Piot man who, knowing he was going to get completely wrecked by whatever infantry spilled out of the half-track, fired and killed a half-track with one shot. Ugh. Brave, brave amateur. Um, ooh, I think the stormtroopers. I thought the stormtroopers are maybe trying to engage the Panzer Jäger. No, it's really the best idea. Okay, he's no. he's drawing some fire. He's trying to encourage him to, to go after that. And I believe the Sherman is considering his best plan of attack. Yeah, in the mortar half track, finally getting resupplied, and a mortar half track can definitely deal with the majority of the threats. Pretty much all the threats in the middle, and allow water to take the whole forest area well up to the north as well we're starting to see the weight of fire from just lots of rifle spam um really be causing some issues over here for the german force as another sherman moves up to the north as well as some flame troops moving down uh, at least to the middle no no oh, never mind they're also to the north as well forgive me San Diego comes under fire from two sources. AT gun goes down. Wow, that was a surprisingly well placed shot. Mm hmm. The six pound is already pretty rooted, so mm -hmm. that's a nice easy kill. The Canadians have managed to take a lot of territory back down south after knocking out the one Vogue Deutsche. And that's going to be giving Harry Spider the slow plus run. You know, Water still has quite a bit of a lead. Yep, but I would not expect it to be lasting for too long. Mm hmm. Life buoy flamethrower. I've actually never checked to see what it was called. Yeah, it's very much a uh, you know very descriptive name. 
life buoy. Because it looks like a life buoy, you see? Oh yeah, of course. I, I just it's, it's one of those kind of <laughs> darkly humorous things. Oh yes, this is a buoy. This is all about life. And we're going to roast you to death. Um, to the north, though, uh, yeah, the Canadians are pushing back on all fronts, and the 1st Panzer, 1st SS, excuse me, is starting to lose a lot of its vehicles here. Yeah, I mean, just lost the Puma up north, which is a pretty big deal. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, this is not looking too good for water at this moment. Not good, not good at all. I mean, it's got quite a few pioneers out to help out on this map, but he needs to try to start knocking out some of these Shermans, as they are the major major threat to go up against. So, oh, Panther! Panther. Yep. yep, yep, yep. Oof, that's definitely an interesting choice. If he loses the Panther, he's gonna have a pretty hard time, I say, coming back from such a loss. And on a map like this, it's a bit hard to use the Panther. You know, because it's very close range. Oh no, we'll have to see how it goes. I'm, I'm still very like, iffy if we get in the Panther was a good choice or not. But I guess we'll see. Well, if it was Panther with Recon Optics, I'd be a little bit more okay with that. <laughs> yeah. And we have a Han Solo charge here by the Stormtrooper going after the Volksdeutsche. And Han Ooh. bites the dust. Um, the flame ships. I'm surprised. I'm surprised that things have stabilized actually as much as they have over here to the north. I'm actually hats off to Walter for staying competitive in this one, even despite losing all of these vehicles. Yeah, you know, once sea phase hits, water is going to be in a lovely position. You don't get any more points in sea phase, but you get all the infantry units. You just get all the units in sea phase for first assets. It really blossoms at that point. True, but it still is another three minutes away. Yeah. If the Panther can at least kill like one or two Shermans, that should help slow down the Canadians. It's really. The Canadian infantry isn't scary. The Pioneers can beat them one and one, easy peasy. It's the tanks and the fights, really, it's the Shermans and the kangaroos. Yet he needs to kill, as that's the thing that's allowing the Canadians to push us. They are the external fire support that he needs. That was so good. That was so eloquent right there. Thank you. I, I, I like to speak, like, you know, some Elder God language every now and again. <laughs> well, hopefully Cthulhu might be uh, stopping in for this stream. Hopefully that happens. Um, in the meantime, we are going to see some a different kind of god showing up, or at least his his prophet here, the Sexton moving in from the southern side of the map, as well as the off-map P4 from the Germans. Ah. And I really do like... I'm, I'm a little iffy on the cost, but I really do like the utility that this tank does bring. It is. We got, you got to think about it like this, Khan. You're essentially paying 50 points for mm -hmm. the off-map and 140 for the Panzer four. Yeah, oh, also yeah. you get some, also got Recon Optics, too. Yes. Which is nice. But yeah, it's, it is a bit of an iffy cost. Like, I don't like the Panzer for off-map because I'd rather just get a regular Panzer four. But, you know, having the off-map capability, especially you're trying to help route out Mm -hmm. All the Canadian stuff in the middle, that will be good. But he definitely needs some, some more infantry down south because he's losing quite a lot of ground rather easily. Well, and the uh, mortar half track was getting resupplied, but an Opal Blitz six pounder almost ended up taking them out. And it looks like yep, Buckle Wolf coming in to take out the six pounder. If he can hit the bloody thing. <laughs> If he doesn't hit it now, he's not going to be able to hit it soon. There's a tri to moving in. Mm -hmm. And you can see, as we as we said before, the Allied tanks are just hunkering down in very low sightline positions. Uh, just waiting for the Germans to get kind of frisky. Mm -hmm. I think as long as he plays keep away from the super well-armed, I would say, uh, I, uh, the German tanks, I, I, I don't know. Harry Spider's got a plus two now. Man Carrier, in fact, giving him a plus two. That's embarrassing. Never mind, there it goes. He really just needs he needs something down south to try to retake that territory. I mean he water still has quite a nice lead mm -hmm. over Harry Spider. But it's breaking awfully quickly here. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and the the Opal Blitz almost goes down from just a random artillery shell. Yeah. Is okay. The Panther's still alive. I was about to say I can see the Panther for a second. It's like no, right? He lost it. But Canadians are pushing pretty hard. 
Like, this is... Well, the panther is going hunting. He does pick up himself a kangaroo. Mm -hmm. The but... six-pound in the middle goes down? Yeah, the six-pound to the north It has a, a half-track that's less than, what, 50 meters? 100 meters, maybe? I'm just barely making it out alive, but gosh. Um, I am surprised that Shermans have been less aggressive. I would like to think that Harry Spider was trying desperately to make them a little more appropriate. Ooh, a super quick barrage coming on down. If he's, he's going to stress out that Sherman and then it's going to be a rush by the P4, you can just kind of, mm -hmm. you can mark my words. And I imagine, yeah, okay. Mortar Back Hacktrack trying to engage to the south. Yep, the north. Yeah, Sherman's going to be engaged in the 2-3-2. Two, two. The problem with, both, problem with both sides is they've been, they've been anxious in deploying their tank reserves, which makes sense because it's, it's just such a, you know, who shoots who, shoot, who shoots who first scenario and the Sherman's very important for Harry Spider and the Panther is very important for Water so neither run really wants to make out risk. Yo, Water is going to be doing it. Oh, oh gee, he he's seven. Oh. But he misses. Oh, oh my how gosh. Could you? Six pounder does have a 232 right in front of him. Yo, oh, and I misses. think he's he gets taken out before that happens. Oh, Panther's so close to seeing that Sherman. So maybe it's just what water needs up north to try to retake this northern side. I'd be wrong, but is there a 17 pounder coming on him? Bedford truck? It was a Sherman. But I feel like they put this is a 17 pounder being brought on. Yeah, it's a 17. Okay. So this is going to either be where the panther dies or. Oh, there's two 17 pounders. Oof. Yeah, I don't want to be that. Um, anti air tries to get anti tank position, but neither do I want to be that anti tank, or that, rather that tank. Driver wounded, 232 is down, and I think 17 Pond is going to get that kill here. Wow, close. It's so far. I don't know who I'm rooting for. Well, it's going to be a 17 pounder now. <laughs> That's not good. First off, minimum internal fire in the P4. Jeez. And the other P4, I think, died. Oh, no, the, I think the other P4 died, but I was incorrect there. Mm -hmm. You've got two star side counts coming in the middle. This is not a unit you see a lot for Canadians, but they're actually pretty good, especially on a map like this. But damn, this is, this is not looking good for water. Like, sea phase came in. And those 17 pounders pretty much saved Harry Spider's ass from being attacked by that panther. Yes, they did. And uh, just to keep the, the odd B3 away, uh, well, Crusade a day keeps the B3 away. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, the Junker away. The Junker away. No Prussian aristocracy here. Um, this hard point to the north is trying to hold on desperately, but there's an awful lot of extra firepower. 17 pounder takes out another P4, oh. and there is what? Two or three vehicles left total. Mm -hmm. And I dare say that that Befela, oh, excuse me, the Befela, the off map uh, P4 is going to get wrecked by these staghounds. Yeah, completely trounced. And Jesus Christ, this is quite a turnaround here from Harry Spider. Yeah, I wasn't gonna call for him. He was getting wrecked. Same. He was. He was not doing very well early on. But water, he. Damn, I, I. Knocking it out the panther definitely hurt quite a bit. I think water definitely could have been a bit more aggressive up north, throw the panther and panther four earlier and try to get some ground jet to relieve pressure. But water's gonna tap out, and yeah, Harry Spiders won three matches, so. Wow. He he takes the whole bloody thing, I believe. Just just again as as a means of just understanding how much death was happening to the Canadians early on. First three and a half minutes, mm -hmm. one thing goes down for the Germans. Yeah, just just one for Deutsche. He had a, he that, had the Canadians reeling, man. He did. It was that lower light light vehicle play. Mm -hmm. That was really bloody good, but um Yeah. This towards the end. Harry Spider managed some, you know, a massive force, pushed through and Jeez, that was quite surprising. Quite surprising it was. indeed. Just looking at kills. Sniper Real scouts. Faster. Actually, Marquise. Wow, Marquise had a good job. IG-18, Pioneer Führer, Aufklärer, oh. and Volksdeutscher to his name. 
Very six pounder had there was one six pounder had both shugs. <laughs> yeah, when you when you're when you're trading like that, I mean, come on. Well, it's a shame that Walter couldn't take advantage of the early person middle and completely capture that middle forest line. Yes, this is some more light vehicles, etc. Because mm -hmm. once the Ram two came into the middle, it really halted any any hope in hell of retaking that area. Yep. Yeah, but yep. uh. Good job, Harry Spider, taking it 3-0 for Season 2, Code S. So, yeah, that was some really bloody good matches from both players. Like, Indeed. we've seen some aggra Like, both sides played pretty aggressively in the majority of... In pretty much all those matches, they were attacking as well as defending. Well, we didn't and get my massive... Taken. We didn't get my massive um, vehicle engagement, but I'll take what I can get, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty some those are some pretty close range maps, pretty close range maps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, yeah, that was that that that's it. That's that's, that's the whole ball of wax. That's, that's that's the whole thing. So I think in the in the coming weeks we still have ourselves some Super League, right? From here, Robert. Yeah, we got some. We got we got plenty of things to cast still. Ah, uh, so folks, don't give up on the Western Front yet. Keep your mind where the sun is setting as opposed to where the sun's going to be rising next year. Yeah. Ugh. But, but yeah, well done, uh, Hair Spider. Anything else, Frank? I, I want to save a big uh, shout out to Curbs and Proto Shocker for really yes. setting up the whole Steel Division League thing. Yes. And also, you know, getting in touch with Paradox to actually have a, you know, legitimate price pool for this thing. That's definitely very cool. And also, Paradox for providing some prizes. I do want to reiterate uh, Harry Spider will be taking home Run Paradox game. All of his choosing, as well as two DLCs or another Paradox game. Get Battle Tech. And, um, Water will be taken home, one Paradox game, and one DLC. So, at the end of the day, everyone wins. They win something, at least. Yes. No, actually, what I'm looking for, let's see. I, you know what? Rang, let's start a Battle Tech League. I'm calling it right now. Let's do it. <laughs> let's do this. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, God. That's a good game. We should talk about that. Anyway. Um, any final words of wisdom, pearls of uh, a outrageously no. wonderful thought? No, uh, thanks everyone for uh, coming along. And I didn't realize until just now, if you look at the map behind the minor victory thing on team, you see one of the things on there is Rommel. Anyway, I don't know how I've never noticed that. I've been playing this game for a year, I haven't noticed behind that. Behind team? Uh, look at team, look yeah. underneath kills, directly down south, and that's an outline for Rommel. Oh, I see. I, I, don't, I have it's never noticed. Huh. Yeah. But right, folks, um, thanks so much for coming on out. Tip your waitresses, stay in school, and I guess we'll catch you all soon. Yep. I'm Rangru. I'm Con Ulrich. Have a great day, everyone. Take it easy.